Even though Greg Gianforte was charged with misdemeanor assault just two nights ago, turns out that he did win the special election in Montana and he is now a US House representative. Now, for those of you who might have missed the story, he did pull a victory despite his alleged assault of a reporter Wednesday night at his campaign headquarters. Ben Jacobs, a reporter for The Guardian, said that Gianforte body slammed him after he attempted to ask the candidate a question about the House Republican health care bill. Now, Keep in mind that a lot of the votes or a lot of the ballots had been turned in early. We'll get into the numbers in just a second. So people had already voted before this whole incident made headlines. But initially Gianforte did not issue an apology, but instead claimed that Jacobs grabbed him by the wrist before the two fell to the ground. That was not true. The audio recording that Jacobs had reinforced his story and there was also a Fox News reporter there who saw what happened and also agreed with a whole, Jacobs. A whole Fox crew, not whole, just a reporter. Right, but the reporter is the one who wrote about it and completely corroborated the account given by Jacobs. Now with that said, unfortunately Gianforte still won. And after he won, he did make a statement and apology in regard to the assault situation. Let's take a look. Hi. I learned a lesson. Yeah. And no, please. I need to share something from my heart here. And I just ask you to bear with me. And when you make a mistake, you have to own up to it. That's the Montana way. Amen. Amen. Last night I made a mistake. And I took an action that I can't take back. And I'm not proud of what happened. I should not have responded in the way that I did. And for that, I'm sorry. And you're forgiven. We love you. Well, glad he didn't have any um, firearms available. It would have <laughs> yeah. been a horrible mistake. Right. First, the Montana way is that you completely lie about it and say that it didn't actually go down. And then once uh, you get sufficient political pressure placed upon you, then you own up to it. When there's no, when there's no danger in any way in... Uh, in issuing the apology, right? So they not only lied well, there about is it. There's danger because he's still facing his criminal charges. But it doesn't really matter because there's only three qualifications for his job. He's 25, mm -hmm. he resides in Montana, and he's a US citizen. So there's nothing that's gonna disqualify him with this charge. And it's a and it's misdemeanor assault and, and, and not felony assault. So you know, the likelihood of it's not like he's gonna be taken away from his job just to do time. He could still serve right. in his position from jail. That's happened before. But so even if but there'll be deal. but there'll be no jail because it's misdemeanor assault. Right. And, and, and as all, a and practical all matter, he actually didn't actually admit to anything specific. He just said I did something. So he kind of left the door open. Should it really turned into a, a cat fight legally. Right, he right. could say I was apologizing for losing my temper right. and not handling it in the right way. Being assaulted by grabbed by the wrist, because reporters are always, so the guy was holding a microphone. Mm -hmm. I mean, a, uh, he was holding a, a tape recorder. So he uh, uh, put it in his, I guess he, he held it to his wrists with one hand and then I guess grabbed Gianforte's wrists with the other hand. That seems like a logical human move. I'm always doing this. Right. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. <laughs> You're I mean, always wrestling with people that you're trying to, I, get yeah, to answer your question. Yeah, ask the answer, and I yeah. So uh, so I mean, it's it is, and you know, for for Annie, you you know, for as long as you've known me, I, I love to talk about apologies and how bad apologies are. That is mm -hmm. an all time bad apology. It does a great disservice to Sean Connery along the way with the it's the Montana way. <laughs> um, right, right. Right. I mean, he didn't yeah. even say that in a cool <laughs> way. You're it's, talking about the Chicago way. It's the Chicago way. <laughs> His apology is one thing, but I think what was also a little worrisome was the response from his supporters, right? And yeah. just their lack of concern over the assault that occurred, the treatment of reporters, um, this lack of, you know, I guess interest in protecting reporters' rights, our constitutional rights, the First Amendment. I mean, if this had happened to a reporter from Fox News, a conservative reporter, I would venture to say that this would be something that Republicans would be ranting and raving about nonstop for like the next month, right? Oh, They don't care about the Constitution, they don't care about freedom of press, but 
First of all, the assumption was that this was a liberal reporter, even though he didn't even know who the reporter was. He had to ask which publication the reporter was from. So how are you already assuming that it's a liberal reporter? And nonetheless, it doesn't even matter what a reporter's political ideology is. You don't get to assault that reporter. You don't get to assault anyone, right? right? Just imagine if the reporter, if what Gianforte and his minions had said was actually true. Suppose a reporter had assaulted. A, a, a man running for Congress. I mean, their reaction, they'd still be talking about it. That's right. Right? But here, the guy actually, with all the power, committed the assaults. And not only did they lie about it, he blamed the victim. And then his aides bragged that over the last 24 hours, they raised something like $100,000. Is that the number that I read? That's t- tens of thousands of dollars. Mm-hmm. I think they raised $100,000 and claimed that they raised it on that. That they use that, so now they use the assault to generate money, blame the victim, and then issue an apology for nothing that doesn't include the part where I completely lied about it to your faces. Right. And only when there were witnesses did I recant and mm-hmm. blame the person who I actually assaulted, who mercifully just appears to have broken his glasses and slightly injured his elbow. And to Anna's point, in the room, there was, you hear this tittering and there's sort of laughter about it. And he maintains a solemnity, you know, because he's trying to sell that moment, sell that apology, as Ben says, maybe not such a great apology. And even as he's trying to sell it, there's more laughter in the room. Right. It's as though, uh, and the other aspect of this, and I think Vox did a piece on this today, uh, uh, the macho that uh, we celebrate in America yeah. mm-hmm. can bring about a, a support and a frenzy that's really not healthy for this country. No, it's not healthy, right? right? Because I also find it incredibly ironic that the same political party that's so distrustful of the government wants to take down, you know, the same people that are supposed to be bringing, speaking truth to power, reporting on the facts. Like, what do they want? Do they want state sponsored media? Is that what they think is better? They think media is the enemy because media doesn't constantly tell them what they want to hear. Right, and so if you think media is the enemy and you want to do away with independent reporters, reporters that aren't related to or tied to the government, what do you want? You want state-sponsored media? You think that's a good good idea? They're just so incredibly, the way that they view things is so short-sighted and so irresponsible and goes against the Constitution. And I don't know if they're even aware of that. I don't even know if they realize what they're advocating for while they're celebrating the assault of a journalist. Right, I think he just got a little ahead of himself and he did what he did and then he was like, oh. So now they're kind of using it as his platform. I think his career is gonna be you know, not as bright as he hoped. Maybe his mm-hmm. governorship that he once maybe was gonna get is not gonna happen. They're definitely gonna hide him. Like that's embarrassing. Yeah. Even if his people no. are laughing or whatever and he's making money, it's gonna be embarrassing for the rest of the people that he's serving with that don't approve of the Yeah, I would have said that maybe a couple of years ago, but <laughs> I think that, you know, we've seen like what are the perhaps the ultimate embarrassment, which was the Trump Access Hollywood tape. Mm-hmm. And it was bulletproof to those who supported him. Similarly, here I think in the state of Montana, those supporters and they're they're substantial in number will look past this incident. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it so will, will his so will those colleagues in Washington. They don't care. They don't care. This will be over. It won't matter. They don't. We've entered into a new world where nothing matters at all anymore. Today, on if I may, reading from Jim Newell's piece in Slate, and just real quick, Rush Limbaugh described this. Is, I love this part. Do you have this by any chance? I don't. Okay, good, all right. So Rush Limbaugh described how Gianforte was, quote, manly, studly. Wow. That's exactly right. what I'm talking right. about. That so that's macho. funny to begin with. He took down a pajama boy journalist. I don't even know what that means. A 125 pound wet dish rag reporter and your average millennial man today. That's what Rush Limbaugh said. Uh, one caller to Rush said that if every Republican candidate threw a reporter to the ground, this is to what you were saying, we know they love it. Quote, it would increase my chances exponentially or voting for them. And on Fox News, an analyst called uh, 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 called Jacobs a snowflake reporter. But the guy, as again, I'm stealing from Jim Newell, but the guy who reporter. lost his mind and committed assault. Uh, he's he, studly. He's <laughs> studly and manly, and the other guy's a snowflake. You couldn't handle a question about a CBO score that you said, I'll give you my opinion as soon as the CBO score comes in. Then the day before the election, the guy's like, hey, the CBO scored in, it's now or never. 
And you decided to assault him, but the reporter's right. a snowflake. Right, and also keep in mind that that statement about Gene Forte being studly, right, is also coming from the same man who called Sandra Fluck a slut because she testified in front of Congress about the importance of accessible birth control, right? What a bad so like guy. the the, yeah. the double He's standards the there, the double no 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 Rush Limbaugh, you're a snowflake where you can't even handle a woman testifying in front of Congress about birth control, so you have to resort to calling her a slut. But but a man who can't handle a question from a reporter and goes ahead and assaults him for asking that question, that guy's a stud. I mean, they're just ridiculous. The double standards that you see in, in conservative arguments drives me absolutely crazy. Gianforte is not a stud, No. okay? No, no. He is a snowflake, he is an incredible loser for not being able to handle that situation like an adult. You're running for, you're running for Congress, you're, you're running to be a representative and this is the way you treat someone for asking you an incredibly simple question. Yeah, he's gonna have disagreements with his colleagues obviously at times yeah. and if that's and that's why I said he's gonna have issues once he gets there. It's cute now and his supporters think it's great, but he's not gonna be able to function in the environment that he's going into where he's going to have to speak to people that don't agree with everything that he's I saying. I would agree with you except he will never be challenged and in that Republican caucus, no one will disagree with him because no one disagrees with anything unless they're to the right of the person they're talking to. There is no more reasonableness, there is no more, you know, the era of Republicans who you could, as a, as a liberal, who I could think, well, I like Bob Dole, he's all right, I like Richard Luger, he's okay, Alan Simpson, Howard Baker, on most issues I disagree with them. Mm -hmm. But you know those guys were prepared to do the, the, the governing business of the nation. And those guys are gone, they left them, Jim Jeffords was the symbol of that and thought, hey man, these guys, they don't, they're not playing anymore. They're not working, they're not interested in governing mm -hmm. uh, and I'm out. And in the House in particular, there may be a couple, maybe in the Senate, if you stretch the definition of who those guys are uh, and, and who those women are. But in the House, there are none, none, zero. So he'll be fine, they'll pat him on the back and they'll say, don't do something like that again, it embarrasses us and that'll be the end of that. Yeah. Well, um, just to give you an idea of the early voting involved in this uh, special election, uh, it's important to note that uh, as of Wednesday night, this is right as the story was breaking that uh, he had assaulted the reporter, 259,558 ballots had been returned. That number is of 357,596 yeah. absentee ballots sent out, meaning about 73% of absentee ballots are in. This is reporting from Wednesday night, by the way. So of approximately 700,000 Montana registered voters overall, 37 had cast their vote early. So that could have played a role as well. Well, 70, and so that's 37% of eligible voters. Eligible mo voters. Right, so it was 73% of people who actually voted. Right. Um, so, you know. Uh, so, so the die was cast really before yeah, the Yeah, you had a quarter of the electorate could have been influenced by that. And Quist right. apparently did, you know, we're not gonna know for sure. He did a little better on election day than he had been doing, but not enough to overcome to that. Him. Young Turks now has over six billion lifetime views. You know who did that? You did that. We're now larger than CNN, ABC, you name a news network online, we're larger than them. And you built all that as everyone scoffed and didn't believe. And here we are guys, thanks to you. Build independent media together with us at tytnetwork.com slash join.